The following are entries from the Lost War Journal of Bishop Havel. First entry. The great demon war rages. The fiends push onward relentlessly, crushing many soldiers to a pulp. Luckily my men do not shake so easily, but without them I feared the demons would overrun all of Lodren. To aid in our efforts, the Lord of Sunlight and his elite honor us by joining the field of battle. Also, Gwyn has gifted two powerful heirlooms for my services, a great shield and a weapon forged from the remains of a dragon during the War of Ancients, both a testament to my unyielding faith and Gwyn's strength as a conqueror. As a man of faith, I know I must take solace in Gwyn's authority, in his absolute power. Yet against all I hold sacred, I fear a darkness brewing within the great Lord Gwyn. Like their sovereign, the knights who once reflected sunlight so brilliantly have become blackened and tarnished by the misery and despair of this war. Yet even as the tides of battle grow darker on all those involved, my mind cannot help but stray from the war, instead falling upon the circumstances that brought about this terror. Sorcery. It was the fumbled flame sorceries of the Witch of Isolith that brought demons to Lodren's door. It was wretched sorcerers who allowed Ulysil to be swallowed in darkness and the great human bastion, Nulando, drowned as well, to the blood-stained hands of three sorcerers, no less. All this death could have been avoided if it was not for the blasphemous magic, if it was not for Seath, the godfather of sorcery. To make matters worse, rumors in the clergy surround the disappearance of maidens in service to the Princess of Sunlight, saying Seath, the great betrayer and ally of Gwyn, is behind the atrocities. This looks very unfavorable upon Lord Gwyn, Unrest in a time of war could see everything fall apart around us. I must squander such rumors. I must travel to the Duke's archives. Signed, Bishop Howell. Second Entry The dredge from the fiery bowels of Lodren to the wondrous city of Anerlondo was tiresome. During the ascent, I came across a young, bungling sorcerer of Vinheim by the name of Loghain. He was infatuated with Seath and the soul arts of magic. In our brief interactions, he divulged his plans of seeking the Duke's archives as well. To protect the secrecy of my investigation, I left Loghain for the Snake Men. He will likely be unharmed. Upon finally reaching the godly city of Anerlondo, I met with the warrior firekeeper. She had many interesting and troubling things to say. Have you heard of Seath the Scaleless? In legend, he turned against the ancient dragons. He became Lord Gwyn's confidant was granted dukedom, and was allowed to pursue his research. At the Regal Archives, he immersed himself in research on scales of immortality, the one thing that he did not have. But his very research drove him mad. The Archives became a dungeon, a place for sinister experiments. Now, it looms over this land high atop the mountain, but I should warn against even an approach. If a person of such rapport, a firekeeper no less, is speaking of sinister experiments at Seath's hand, I fear the worst. Soon I shall enter the archives to see for myself. Signed, Bishop Havel. Third Entry I awoke in a prison cell, but the last thing I remember was traversing the library's trickery until I came face to face with the grotesque abomination. Without provocation, the mad dragon attacked. Seath truly is something unholy. My strikes had little to no effect on the great betrayer, and I was defeated with ease, and so I awoke in a prison. Escape was not overly difficult, but it's what I found within the prison that's changed everything. I discovered a prison cell filled to capacity with Seath's mistakes. I had seen abnormalities like this before when encountering the deformed dragon. These horrid tentacles are a result of Seath's failed experiments. A mistake the white dragon knows all too well, firsthand. The poor mutated creatures stood, weeping in reflection of what they had become. Some still possess miracles exclusive to the followers of the Princess of Sunlight, Guinevere. It is doubtful they would leave their goddess's side willingly. I wonder then what magnificent honor the maidens believed they were performing in service to the gods by volunteering to cease horrid experiments. Yet this is their reward. Worse still, a firekeeper's soul was found in the back of the dungeon. There is no possible way Gwyn does not know this is happening. And frighteningly, it would appear Gwyn is actually encouraging this blasphemy. Perhaps Gwyn hopes Seath can create firekeepers to prolong his precious age of fire. I see now Gwyn will sacrifice anything 
entire human cities, the faithful, even allies, all to maintain his corrupted power. I must put an end to this tyranny, but I am not powerful enough to oppose a god. The dragons are the only beings to ever stand against the power of the mighty lords, and there are legends of a land, the last remaining vestige of the Age of Ancients, the Age of Dragons, said to hold secrets to magnificent power. I must seek out this so-called Lake of Ash. Perhaps the power I seek to overcome treachery will be found there. Signed, Havel. Fourth Entry I have returned from Ash Lake, where I found an ancient power. The land itself is a skeleton, a shell of a forgotten time. Yet there is neglected potential within the ancient land turned precious relic, dragon scales. They hold the key to immeasurable strength. When I held the stone scales I could feel the power of dragon within my soul. The irony is not lost on me. I loathe the abomination that is the pale dragon Seath, the great betrayer. Yet it is I who will use the power of dragons to topple Gwyn's corruption. In the end, Seath and I are kindred spirits, both betrayers both fates tied to the stone scales. Though I fear it may have all been for naught, I was sent for by Gwyn, my most trusted lieutenant relayed the message. Gwyn knows of my infiltration into the Duke's archives, I am to turn myself in. If I do not, I fear the lives of my men will be forfeit, so I will turn myself in. But not before sharing the story of vileness and complete malice towards humans I have witnessed at the hands of Seath and the overseeing eye of Gwyn. After hearing the tales, my men are furious, speaking of freeing me from incarceration. They speak of an occult rebellion. I tell them to remove such foolish notions from their mind. Only the power of dragons can topple the lords. All that I have ever known or believed in has been warped. And of only one thing I am certain. This is my last entry. Signed, Havel, The Rock. Rumor it may be. But I have heard of a surviving ancient dragon who resides in this land. A coterie of undead serves the dragon. As they train to become dragons themselves, sounds unlikely. But you never know, do you? <laughs> <laughs>